Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys. So I wanted to come on here and talk about this so-called scientific research that was done to determine the most beautiful woman in the world. And the most beautiful woman in the world, okay, all over the world, is none other than Bella Hadid, okay? Bella Hadid, if you guys don't know, she's like a huge time model, super rich, really thin, gorgeous, you know what I'm saying, all that stuff, okay? So they said that she's the number one most beautiful woman in the world, and the number two most beautiful woman in the world is Beyonce, okay? Beyonce. So, of course, social media was in an uproar yesterday. The beehive was not here for it. People really felt some type of way, okay? And the person who came up with this list is a cosmetic plastic surgeon named Dr. De Silva. So, basically, he went out for the Greek golden uh, beauty ratio. And what that is, is basically it's a proprietary face map. And it's a face map that they used to measure beauty. And it was used in the olden days. And back then, your beauty was measured by, like, you know, how far apart your eyes were, how wide your nose was, how full your lips are, your cheekbones, your forehead to chin ratio. It's like all these little measurements to basically measure attractiveness. And a lot of people still go off of that because, like, we always say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But most people prefer a face that's symmetrical. So if your face drew, or so if your eyes up here or it's not symmetrical then you're then you're deemed to be you know quote unquote you know less attractive okay so this is nothing new what I found really interesting were the feature percentages and what they deem to be attractive what scored high and what scored low okay so I'm gonna go ahead and play you guys this e-news clip y'all go ahead and check this out and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary so crazy to me Bella Hadid named the most beautiful woman in the world at least according to Greek mathematics. Yeah, the golden ratio of beauty phi standards did the study and they say Bella's face comes the closest to perfect with a 94.35% perfect face. If like me, you think this is all, well, kinda crazy and also unimportant, especially in the year 2019, I guess there really is a science behind it. Yeah, the scientists look at golden ratio measurements. It's something Dr. Terry Dubrow explained to ET a while back, using Meghan Markle as an example. The key thing Meghan has is the golden ratio of facial beauty. In other words, she's got the really good relationship between the width of her face, which is the area between your temples here, relative to the height. Ideally, this should be half of this. Or when you really subject it to mathematical equations. Okay, I love math. <laughs> this over this equals 1.61. Weird. A ton of other celebs made the list, including Beyonce, who according to this science has a 92.44% perfect face. Amber Heard comes in at number three with a 91.85% perfect face. And at number four is Ariana Grande with a 91.81% perfect face. But back to Bella, she just turned 23 and celebrated at Le Chalet in New York. And get this, her ex The Weeknd showed up to support, but a source tells ET he was just there as a friend and they are not back together. All right, so you guys just saw that clip. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys um, the top three pictures here. I'm gonna show you Beyonce, Bella Hadid, and Ariana Grande. And I want you guys to pay really close attention to this, okay? So if we look at um, Bella Hadid's ratio. So if you look at her nose position, she got a 93.4% she got a 93 .4 for the width and the length of her nose, her lips, which are not extremely full, she got a 94.1%, okay? And um, her nose base and lip width, she got a 95.8%. Now let's go to Ariana Grande. Ariana Grande's nose got a 97.7%. Her nose base got a 89.7%. And her lips got a 96%, okay? So now let's go to Beyonce. 
This is where a lot of points were taken out for Beyonce. Beyonce's nose width slash length ratio was 88%. Her nose base and lip width was 89%. Her lips were a 95%. So you can see those are the ones that scored the least on Beyonce. Um, and then her eyebrow shape was also an 87%. But somehow she came in second with her total and Bella Hadid came in first. So my personal opinion, you know, um, I feel like this is doing nothing but perpetuating the European standard of beauty. So basically if your nose is a certain width, <laughs> if your nose is bigger than Beyonce's, it's going to be in the 70th and 60th percentile. Therefore, therefore, it's not going to be deemed as attractive, taking points off. So this is basically based on the European features. As we know, most white people have a more, you know, pointier nose, smaller nostrils and things like that. Their lips are not as full as the average black woman. So those points would be deemed off. So I just think that this list is BS. Now, I agree with face Symmetry. I do believe that a more asymmetrical face does make people more attractive. If everything just kind of flows, it does make people more attractive as opposed to something is crooked or off. So I do get that. But then when you start talking about, you know, the width of people's noses, the fullness of people's lips, you know, their, their eyebrow to eye ratio, I think that's being a little bit too specific. And I think that after a while, the list can come off as potentially racist because as we see, the only black person who made that list is Beyonce. So unless you have Beyonce's features and you know a smaller nose, you know her lips are full but they're not super full, unless you have those features, unless you look like Beyonce, what is that telling to young black girls who don't have those features? The average young black girl who has African or phenotypically African features because Beyonce does have Creole in her and she has other admixtures, but to the typical, you know, um black person, their nose is more full than Beyonce. Their lips are fuller than Beyonce's. So I think it's really unfortunate that they're propping her up and her features up to be something that black women should aspire to. Now, I see a lot of people upset because Beyonce's not in first place and they think she's prettier than Bella. First, second, third, or fifth, all that aside, it's deeper than that, okay? It's deeper than her coming behind the white woman. The most important part to me is the fact that those features are what she scored the least on, and those are the features that are most prominent in people of African descent. So I just think that this whole list and the whole judging of people's specific features and not their whole, you know, symmetry of their face is going to be a slippery slope, okay? And when it's all said and done, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how beautiful you are aesthetically, how asymmetrical your face is, how beautiful your hair, your features, and things like that may be. To me, it's about what's in the inside. Are you a beautiful person in the inside? Do you treat others with respect? Do you treat others fairly? To me, that's what should be measured, not so much how wide somebody's nose is, how full or not full somebody's lips are. So this whole list to me is just BS, but it does really make a good point in society and in the mainstream that that is why you see what you see on television. That's why when you see a lot of beauty ads and commercials and in movies when you talk about lead characters, that is why they're predominantly white females because again, that is the European standard of beauty. That is what makes a majority of people comfortable to see as the standard of beauty. Hence why that standard is used and placed on a pedestal all over the world. Hence why skin bleaching is so popular all over the world, not just here in America, not just in African countries or in the Caribbeans, but also in Asian countries, in India, things like that. So, you know, the whole situation is just really sad, but I just really wanted to point that out because I think people are losing focus on the debate. People are so mad that she's number two, and I don't care if she's number one. The fact that they're judging this based off of the size of your phenotypes, like your nose and your lips, is just really disturbing to me. But again, this is nothing new, and this is not to knock Bella or say that Bella is not attractive. I think she's a very beautiful woman. Hell, I think everybody on this list is really pretty in their own way. You know what I'm saying? I would never take that from them, but I just think it's, you know, a really slippery slope when you're trying to tell the, you know, black community that in order to be seen is beautiful you need to look like Beyonce so that's the part that I'm not feeling so anyways y'all let's go ahead and get the discussion popping go ahead and leave a comment 
Let me know your thoughts on this entire situation. Once again, concerning the mainstream media pushing this narrative of, you know, what is the standard of beauty? And of course, shock to no one, the standard of beauty is the European standard of beauty. Do you guys agree with this list? Do you feel like, you know, Bella Hadid, you know, definitely deserves it because of those features and because she's beautiful? Or do you feel like this list and, you know, even trying to measure people's features is somewhat slightly racist? So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right, deuces.